In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Everyone, and welcome to uh, today's Internet Mass, which I am offering in thanksgiving for the sixth year of my priesthood. So it's my anniversary, sixth anniversary today. And as we begin this Mass, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax omnibus, pone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, Ask what you would like me to give you. Solomon replied, 
O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in succession to David his father, but I am a very young man, unskilled in leadership. Your servant finds himself in the midst of this people of yours that you have chosen, a people so many its number cannot be counted or reckoned. Give your servant a heart to understand how to discern between good and evil. For who could govern this people of yours that is so great? It pleased the Lord that Solomon should have asked for this. Since you have asked for this, the Lord said, and not asked for a long life for yourself or riches or the lives of your enemies, but have asked for a discerning judgment for yourself, here and now I do what you ask. I give you a heart wise and shrewd as none before you has had, and none will have after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord, how I love your law. My heart I have resolved, O Lord, is to obey your word. The law from your mouth means more to me than silver and gold. Lord, how I love your law. Let your love be ready to console me by the promise to your servant. Let your love come and I shall live, for your law is my delight. Lord, how I love your law. That is why I love your commands more than the finest gold. Why I rule my life by your precepts and hateful ways. Lord, how I love your law. Your will is wonderful indeed, therefore I obey it. The unfolding of your word gives light and teaches the simple. Lord, how I love your law. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. We know that by turning everything and everything to their good, God cooperates with all those who love him, with all those he has called according to his purpose. They are the ones he chose specially long ago and intended to become true images of his son, so that his son might be the eldest of many brothers. He called those he intended for this, those he called he justified, and with those he justified he shared his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learnt from my Father. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Great in your Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone has found. He hides it again, goes off happy, sells everything he owns, and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he goes and sells everything he owns and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea that brings in a haul of all kinds. When it is full, the fishermen haul it ashore. Then, sitting down, they collect the good ones in a basket and throw away those that are no use. This is how it will be at the end of time. The angels will appear and separate the wicked from the just to throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Have you understood all this? 
They said, Yes. And he said to them, Well then, every scribe who becomes a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out from his storeroom things both new and old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. People sometimes ask me what my hobbies and interests are, what gives me energy, and how I can unwind. So, three things I enjoy would include outdoor sports like snowboarding and waveboarding, that sort of thing, traveling to interesting places, and a secret hobby is a bit of metal detecting now and then, which in a way ties in with today's gospel. So just to recount a little story to you, there was one day many years ago that I was out walking the dog with my mother and was doing some metal detecting at the same time. Now my mother had stopped to speak to a friend of hers, as is the way of things, and they started speaking about me. And you know the way they can speak about you is if you are not there. And they will say things like, oh, I see your son is down for a little while. How long is he down for? And then my mother will respond uh, without giving me the chance, uh, as if you're not there at all. <laughs> and as I was listening to all of this, all of a sudden the metal detector made a blipping noise at the grass just under my feet. So I began to dig and then just a few inches under the surface of the soil I unearthed this 1797 cartwheel penny coin with an image of George III on it. So a very interesting coin. And whilst my reaction was of one of amazement I didn't actually react in the same way that the man did in the parable today. We hear that he, when he found the treasure, hid it again and then went to sell everything he owned in order to buy the field. So who would react in a way like that if they found some buried treasure? The answer is, of course, nobody. So here again is the twist in the parable, which indicates it has a deeper meaning. So Jesus is instructing us today about what the kingdom of heaven is like and how we can attain it. Last week we had the wheat mixed with the darnel, the mustard seed and the yeast in the bread. Whereas this week we have the buried treasure, the pearl of great price, and the dragnet with the haul of fish. Now, around the time of Jesus, there were no real banks to speak of. So in order to keep your money safe, you would simply have to bury it. And that meant, of course, that if there was a sudden death or a war, then it could be hidden for a long time. Now, Jewish law stated at that time that if a man finds fruit or money on the ground, then it would belong to him. It was a case of finders keepers. Then we hear in the next parable about a merchant who finds a pearl of great value. So he goes and sells everything he owns in order to possess it. Again, this is a completely irresponsible thing to do. How are you going to survive and support your family if you have nothing but an expensive pearl? The differences between these two people in these parables perhaps is that the first man might be a labourer who stumbles across the buried treasure and finds it by chance, whilst the merchant is actively seeking something of high value. In other words, the kingdom of heaven is offered to all, rich and poor alike, those who are initially oblivious, as well as those who are actively seeking it. Notice that both men 
make a decision to sacrifice all they have in order to obtain that treasure. When you encounter the kingdom of heaven, decisions need to be made which often require an old way of life to be left behind. Uh, the image of the dragnet hauling in a big catch of fish reminds us that the kingdom of heaven is open to all people. The fish would be taken to the shore in the boat where they would eventually be sorted out, reminding us that God will judge all things at the end of time, like the wheat and the darnel of last week. That's why we have to be always cautious about judging others ourselves. So these parables remind us that the kingdom of God is a hidden reality in this world. In a sense, it is just below the surface, yet it is something that is valuable and precious, and you cannot easily obtain the kingdom of God. You have to give all that you have in order to acquire it. An immediate and wholehearted choice needs to be made at a price that often amounts to all that we can give. It requires everything from us. We are called to make a commitment and to give all we can in order to obtain it. We must be radical, decisive, and even in a sense foolish in how we react towards it, a bit like the merchant and the pearl, because ultimately it's the most valuable acquisition that we can hope for. And so let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to the Father and ask him to hear our prayers and answer them in his infinite love for us. We pray for our political leaders and those whose actions affect our daily lives, that they may be blessed by the Lord with wisdom Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that all of us may listen to the advice of the government and medical experts so that we can protect ourselves and our community from the devastating effects of the virus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the Lord may give us the insight to recognise him as the true and living God, and welcome him into our life, home, and community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Today, let us remember the Salisbury parishes in our diocese. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us now pray to our Blessed Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, grant us a discerning heart that guides us to you and allows us to be united with you in your kingdom. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
I'm using Eucharistic prayer number one. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Declan, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius Alexander, Marcellinus Peter, Felicity Perpetua, Agatha Lucy, Agnes Cecilia Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And so now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. So just to wish you all a very blessed day and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go and announce, go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.